Welcome to the Bernie Kosar Show with the Cleveland quarterback legend himself alongside the top dog, Hanford Dixon. I'm Gabriella Cruz. Off-season mode is officially starting. Missed you all in the last couple weeks. Well, I uh, miss you guys, too. Uh, just want you to know I was down uh, um, in uh, Virginia Beach with the uh, Browns backers, and uh, they were voted club of the year. So I've been down there. The weather was pretty nice, too. A lot like it is here today, believe it or not. Was that the, the down in uh, Virginia Beach, the Tidewater Browns backers, the home of Bruce Smith? Yeah. Mm -hmm. big. I, I, you know, I From the old days of the Bruce Smith charity golf tournament well, that we you, used to do down there? Yeah, but you know what I did, though? I wanted to survive. You know, I wanted to make it through Virginia Beach, so I stayed away from big sex. So, you know? <laughs> so, so yeah. that way, it, you know, I was able to survive that trip, if you understand. What I mean, yes. you know, that you know I, would, you know. A, a useless, a useless piece of information now as I'm into my health and wellness journey yeah. is we used to do this charity event, me and Top Dog yeah. with yeah. with Bruce Smith, yeah. uh, the great Reggie Langhorn, yeah. another great Brown is from the Tidewater, Virginia Beach, Newport News area, and we used to, I used to actually own the Arby's Roast Beef Restaurants <laughs> in Tidewater, Newport News, Virginia Beach, okay? I was quite a few ho-hos heavier at the time. That is not part of my holistic wellness program right now. You know what's crazy? It, it's funny, you talk about uh, that restaurant you used to own, and I'm gonna make you guys laugh here. No, that's restaurant. why I did bankruptcy, well, there's well, like well, 10 well, of well. them. <laughs> Well, well, you know, every every state I go in now, I uh, I look for... You guys ever heard of Crystal Restaurants? No, I did not. I always look for a Crystal Restaurant, because the restaurant, because I had some chicken wings uh, down in Birmingham, Alabama, at one of those restaurants, and now I'm looking for... You know, they was just so... Because I, I like my wings crispy, BK. So, you know, I've been looking for a Crystal... That, when I was in Virginia Beach, I was looking for a Crystal restaurant so, so take that for what it's worth and just let it go <laughs> while we get away for a yeah. month we really digress i've lost you my young right. man i want i thought we left as juicers I okay i want to get you with a smoothie uh, okay Gabby, we have a big guest today don't we We've got a very special guest, and we want everybody to stick with us the bernie kosar show coming up right after this we'll introduce him Welcome back to the Bernie Kosar Show. We are so excited to introduce our first off-season guest, and we've really got to build him up here, gang. Hall of Famer, former Cleveland Browns tight end, the architect of Baltimore's Super Bowl 35 and Super Bowl 47 championship teams, and an elite personnel evaluator who became the NFL's first African-American GM in 2002, and of course, still a very treasured pal of both Bernie and Hanford's. Please welcome Ozzy Newsom. Yay. Yay! What an honor! What an honor! The great one. Hey, dog. What's up, guys? How y'all doing? Dog, I told her she was saying too much and too many good things about you. You know, I told Gabby to cut it down, but she wouldn't listen. Yeah, that, that was my abbreviated version. He didn't want to gas you up too much. <laughs> well, no, uh, I don't need that. You know, I'm here to uh, patronize Bernie and Hanford today. Oh, gosh. We, we don't want to make this a love fest, and I don't want to sound like a suck-up right here, but right off the bat, Gab, Gab starts with uh, actually a very concise bio. It's And for the, the young listeners out there, I would think everybody knows the great Ozzy Newsome. And God, you could actually go on for a half hour in terms of your awesome accomplishments as a... but. If anybody takes anything out of this, and I'm going to try not to be over gratuitous and over complimentary to you because we really did do a little ball busting in our old days back together, and we still think we're young and stuff. But Ozzie Newsom, a Hall of Famer, is a great player for the Cleveland Browns, and absolutely, we're going to start a new category because you should be a Hall of Famer as a Hall of Fame executive for what you're doing in the league. And unfortunately, I am still a massive Browns fan. And now that you're an ex a Hall of Fame executive with the Ravens, you've made this century one pain in the ass for us Browns fans. <laughs> well, uh, you know, with the, uh, the transition we made in 1996, uh, having to move here to Baltimore and given the opportunity by Mr. Modell to uh, be in charge of the personnel department, you know, Hey, I was surrounded by a lot of really, really good people that worked with us in Cleveland. I mean, you got, uh, you got, you know, Saban was there, 
uh, Kirk Ferris was there, Pat Hill was there, all of those guys. Uh, some of them, you know, uh, Pat and Kirk uh, came over to Baltimore with us, but also you talk about Scott Pioli, Phil Savage, uh, Jimmy Schwartz, George Kokanis, you know, so we had a great group of guys. We all learned on the bill, uh, you know, how to go about, you know, day-to-day, uh, the day-to-day operations in, in the NFL. So it was uh, having a bunch of real good friends that we all worked together to help uh, started this foundation here. Ozzy, what was your initial reaction when you heard the news that the team was moving to Baltimore since you mentioned it? And how did you hear? Hey, and before you answer, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to forget too. And that you named a list of some awesome people within that organization, within the league, in the history of the league. And that staff was so loaded back then that even missed a few names. You know, Al Groh went on to be head coach of the yes. Jets, University of Virginia. Eric Mangini yes. was on that staff. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, Eric geez, it's yeah. a, that was an amazing collection of people that, that we really got to learn from, that, that you, you got to learn from, and you taught so many of them. I mean, God, your tree uh, of people now that's evolved from, from that is, is really is inspirational, Wiz. Well, well, yeah, but like I said, it all started right there in, in Cleveland. And yeah, as you both know, because you both were great teammates, you know, it's all about, you know, the guys that step in the huddle with you. And uh, those guys that work with me, that the other guys that came uh, up under me uh, within the program, they all were great teammates. Hey, I'm sorry to get off of Gab's question here, but I'm looking at the three of us up here on the screen. I got a rush of emotion that just went through me. And before I forget and stuff, you had mentioned in passing just real quickly, and I'm looking at the three of us here. Uh, God bless Art Modell. Yeah. And, and having yeah. – he should he should be in the Hall of Fame. I know no that's a sensitive subject here no in Cleveland and no Cleveland question. fans. As we look and – Gab quickly went through. There's so many great compliments we could throw out about Ozzie Newsom and what you you meant to our team, our city, this league and stuff. Um, Art Modell with the, what yeah. we do with Monday Night Football, what he, what he did here within the city. Um, Gab said, and we're looking at the first African-American general manager in the NFL, and look, unfortunately, how he's beaten our ass in Cleveland doing that. I mean the the uh, vision of, of what he did and I know what he's done for the three of us up here uh, you in particular I, I don't want to not say anything about that and just let that pass without my uh, me chiming in and and Wiz and Hanford I'd like you to yeah. give a couple comments oh uh, Modell I, I I tell you what I tell people all the time that it, they didn't come any better than Art I, I mean I it, there's no question he should be in the Hall of Fame but I say have a quick question for you. You know, a lot of people today, they still find it uh, surprising that uh, you're still with the Baltimore Ravens. They think you've retired. I, I tell people, I said, no. I said, uh, uh, he's still the first one uh, pretty much uh, in the building uh, every day. That's because he can't uh, sleep. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why don't you, uh, and they showed you eating well, the whole combine. <laughs> he didn't retire. Right. <laughs> Why don't you tell them a little bit about, uh, obviously you're still with the Ravens. Tell them a little bit about what your role is right now. Well, uh, you know, three years ago, well, actually five years ago, Steve and I sat down and uh, we created an exit plan. And a part of that plan was for me to continue to be the GM, but that uh, Eric was going to take over. Uh, And Eric was uh, the first person that we hired when we uh, came to uh, Baltimore and, you know, he was, he took on the, the same role as all of these other guys that we've talked about. And uh, so he had been in the organization. He turned down the opportunity to be a GM at some of the other clubs to stay here. So we created that exit plan. But part of the plan was, is that Eric would become the GM and I would just become an executive vice president. And what that entails is, you know, I still get a chance to be a part of all of the major decisions. It's just that, you know, my phone don't want, don't ring at 11 o'clock at night when the <laughs> players get in trouble. You know, <laughs> Eric has to take those calls and then I get the second call. <laughs> well, it, it's ringing. You're just not going to answer it. Uh-huh. I know he's, he, he, he's just he's just not going to uh, answer yeah. that. 
Ozzy, thanks for giving us an inside look at how you've climbed the ladder in your career. We want to hear more, but first we've got to take a short break, so we'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the Bernie Kosar Show with the top dog, Hanford Dixon. We are joined by Hall of Famer and Browns legend Ozzie Newsom as he continues to tell us about the evolution of his career. I go back to one of the things that Ozzy taught me. And Wiz is a, a visionary and a guy that I has Nostradamus-type tendencies when it's picking players or picking tendencies or, or trends within the league. Wiz, when you were... Hiring John Harbaugh, it sounds like an easy hire today where, oh, John Harbaugh, great NFL coach. No kidding, he should be there. But when Ozzie Newsome and the Baltimore Ravens hired John Harbaugh, you actually got a lot of flack for that. Oh, my God, what's he doing? Yeah, this special teams coach from the Philadelphia Eagles, one, who is he? Is Did he make a mistake? Is it Jim Harbaugh? I mean, you got all kinds of flack for that. And I remember Ozzie saying to me, and I said, Wiz, what's – what were you thinking there? What was kind of the mindset for that? And I had, and I like to think I'm kind of astute with football and that I have most, if not all the answers, I don't. And Oz said to me, he goes, you know one of the great things about finding a head coach, everybody wants an offensive guy, defensive guy, special teams coaches, okay, they coordinators, they are the only guy that talks to the whole team. They got to coordinate all the people, all the all the different personalities, all the different groups, and they are used to, if they hadn't been a head coach, they are used to talking to the whole team and leading the whole team, which is a precursor to being a head coach in the NFL. Well, that, unfortunately for us Browns fans, was a Nostradamus <laughs> genius type uh, decision that you made, and that kind of wisdom that you showed back, that, God, how many, was that a decade and a half ago? How long ago was that decision? Hey, I told well, you. Well, it's been 15 years. Uh, I have a great relationship with John. Uh, you know, on those 15 years, we've had some disagreements. You know, sometimes we'd be discussing the thing, and we uh, we always say, let's sleep on it. And then the next morning we would come in and, you know what, I would take John's position and he would take my position, you know, after thinking about it. But we have a great working relationship. And like you said, you know, the special teams coach, he gets to have hands on with all of the guys uh, on the team. You know, he has to coach all 11 positions on the punt team, on the punt return team, on the kickoff, the kickoff return team. He has to coach every one of those guys. But the other thing that John had did in his last year, uh, he moved to the defense and he coached the secondary. So you're bringing a guy in that has the expertise on, on two elements of the game. And so knowing that he could be in the defensive meeting room, he can be in the special teams meeting room, and then he would have to go out and try to find him a good offensive mind that would uh, have his – understanding of what he wants the offense to look like. Ozzy, thanks so much again for your time. We've got to take one more short break. We'll be back with the Bernie Kosar Show, joined by the incredible Ozzy Newsome right after this. Welcome back to the Bernie Kosar Show with the top dog, Hanford Dixon. I'm Gabriella Cruz. Thanks for joining us as we continue to pick the brain of Hall of Famer and Cleveland Browns legend Ozzie Newsome, who also currently serves as the executive vice president of the Baltimore Ravens. Ozzie, I know you're tired. And again, thanks for uh, uh, coming on with us. But I have a question. I know you just got back from the Combine. Um, you know, there's been some talk, uh, you know, they want to get rid of the combine, but it is very, very important for a lot of those guys. Talk about uh, uh, things that you guys get done and how important that combine uh, is to uh, to the college players and also to uh, the NFL. And, and before you answer that, could I add that uh, thankfully they didn't have the combine for me because it was so important for me to get drafted first that they didn't have the combine so that I didn't get on film running that 5-5-5-40 or having a buck 85 cave my chest in, my brothers. Okay? Hey, dog, you, dog, you ran faster than that, did you? No, I did not. <laughs> I was a 5 5 5 -er. hey, You still would have drafted him, wouldn't you, dog? <laughs> uh, well, 
you know, but you know what? They still showing the video of Tom Brady when he was at the Oh combine. God, he <laughs> looked. You know, look, he looked look like him. He looked like Skeet Nehemiah compared to me. <laughs> but the biggest thing about the combine in your question is, is the, the medical information. You know, uh, if we didn't have the combine, then each club would be flying guys all over the country trying to come in and get. Uh, the medical information, get the physicals on them. So we go to Indy and we get 300 plus players that we get all the medical information. And if there's some additional information that we can get, then we can fly those four or five guys in. So that's the biggest uh, aspect of the combine is getting all that because our doctors, the Browns doctors, the Steelers doctors, they get hands on on all of those players and we get all of that information. You know, the on-field stuff, the interviews, the interviews are uh, okay, but, you know, you only got 15 or 20 minutes, and it's hard to really drill down on someone with that amount of time, so you probably end up inviting them back to your club. But the combine is is there. The biggest purpose is the medical information of over 300 players uh, in one spot that every team gets a chance to put their hand on. Every year, there's a kid or two that just uh, just pop out of nowhere. And I think everybody's talking about this kid. I think he's a quarterback out of Florida, uh, Anthony, Anthony Richardson. Richardson. Uh, you know, say this kid just blew everybody away. And and another and a follow-up question with that. Why is everybody, you know, on Bryce Young talking about he's too damn small? I mean, I, you want to make Oh, you me, Alabama no, guys. You want to make you me Alabama hot. Guys. You know, I get hot, you know. I think he weighed in at 204 or whatever. That, but still, I mean, the guy, the kid can play. Hey, Hanford, the football player is a football player. Right. But, you know, he he measured the same height as uh, Kyler Murray, you know, uh, about the same weight. So, you know, he passed the test. But, I mean, you know, he, what did he do over the past two or three weeks? He probably been eating a lot so that he got his weight up <laughs> just for that one time. Does he actually weigh 205 pounds? I don't know. But, you know what, watch the tape. You know, at the end of the day, you can find reasons why not to like a player. But just put the tape on and watch the tape. Oh, he's – and you watch the tape. His pocket awareness, Jalen Hurts, his ability to to find guys down the field, his touch and timing, the way he keeps his eyes up the field and his escapability is gorgeous and stuff. Hey, when you're looking at, though, like an Anthony Richardson and you see the way the the offenses have been evolving and, and you, Oz, and Baltimore, you guys have been one of the kind of the innovators and – in, in uh, the running game from the offensive perspective and stuff. When you see an Anthony, Anthony Richardson with that type of uh, physical skills, what goes through your mind? Well, uh, you know, he's, uh, as he said, he's a combination of uh, Lamar Jackson and Cam Newton. You know, Lamar Jackson as far as his athleticism and Cam Newton as far as his size. And uh, he's a very imposing player. Uh, when he walked in the room, he did walk into our room. And, uh, but you can see that he has a lot of growth in front of him. And if he gets in the right situation, then, you know, you, that, that meter or whatever you measure, I think, you know, he'll be a much better uh, NFL player than he was a college player because he'll be able to get here with all the nutrition, the training, and there is no 20 hour limit you know, for the players. I and mean, we can have players here as, as much as we want. So there's a lot of growth that he can have, and I think he's going to end up being a good NFL player. And just like we were talking about John Harbaugh and almost a Nostradamus-type vision, you also took flack when you, um, when you took Lamar Jackson back years ago, and you put Lamar in a system with that Greg Roman system of running the ball that – you went outside the box with the system to put Lamar in a system to be successful. And because of that, now today we're having this conversation about what to do with Lamar. But you did that. You heeded that own advice with him. You didn't throw him into the wrong system. And because as a young, um, formative quarterback who needed to grow a little bit, you took your time and put him in the right system. Anthony Richardson gets in the wrong system, you could actually crush a talent like that. You put him like with you did with Lamar. You give him a chance for that. How are you feeling these days with, with Lamar and that? Well, you know, the key is uh, is 
understanding the player. And you have to give Greg and, and John for coming up with a, a system that was Lamar friendly and and friendly for uh, our offense. And, uh, and you know, and for over the last three years, I mean, we were explosive in a lot of different ways on offense, but it was, you know, it was key to uh, our running game and with a Lamar's ability to extend plays and do things like that. And, you know, but I think, you know what, I don't know if Hanford would have been as good a player as he was if he had to play off all the time, you know. He needed to get up in, in, in the guy's face and bump and run. So we, as with you, uh, with Bernie, I mean, if we have tried to put Lamar in your offense or Marino's offense or Kelly, then, you know, we, we would have been suppressing him. So Greg and John, they did a great job of accentuating what his talents were and matching it with the, the offense that we ran. Ozzie Newsom giving us an inside evaluation of the AFC North. Thanks for joining us. We're actually out of time for this episode, but we'll continue the conversation with Ozzie next week. So tune in. Thanks for watching the Bernie Kosar Show.